Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. More Christmas cards for my series using the Simon Says Stamp December card kit that I just posted an unboxing video of. I think that was yesterday. I'm losing track of time. Anyway, of course, I went with the little gnome or little, little, I can never say it, little gnome <laughs> wafer die that comes in the kit. It is, um, it is available separately. And I'll link to everything like I always do in the supplies. But I started with that wafer die and I did all my die cutting off camera just to save myself um, the hassle. And I die cut the base just from white cardstock. And then I also die cut the beard and nose portion from white cardstock. And then the hats and the, I guess, shirt portion. I die cut from the pattern paper that comes in the kit. So for the nose, I just used Copic markers to color it in really quick and simple. I just used E43, 42, and 41. Um, more of like a muted beige, like almost like those those ones, the E40s are almost like a grayed beige, if that makes sense. And I chose that specifically because of the pattern paper in the kit. That seems to be kind of the theme. It's slightly muted with the little images of the gnomes. So anyway, did that for the noses. And then for their beards, I kept it really, really simple and just used a few warm gray colors just to give it that little bit of shading and definition. Um, not going all out, although I've seen some of the other cards that other designers have done and like really putting in like a lot of like texture, like giving the gnomes all these different like textured beards. It looks so cool. But since I was doing a bunch, <laughs> I wanted to keep this a little bit simpler. So I just added just really simple you know, lines and whatnot, like a little shading under where the nose would be and then along the bottoms. So once I was done that, all I have to do now is assemble everything. So I had already kind of paired up the patterns I wanted to use for everything. So I just had to add my adhesive with some craft tacky glue and then just start. And I just started kind of from the top down. So I adhered his little hat and then the nose and beard and then the little shirt portion and set it aside and went on to the second one. And just kept repeating this process until I was completely finished adhering all of these together. And since I die cut six of them, I decided I would do six cards because, again, anyone who watches my videos knows I like to do multiples, especially when it's Christmas cards because I have a bunch that I need to send out. So I like having as many as possible on hand and ones like this I like because I'm doing the same process. I'm following the same steps. However, by mixing it up a little bit with the pattern paper and whatnot, they're not all exactly the same. So one, I don't get bored because I just, I used to do that back in the day, like do just tons, all of the exact same. And sometimes that can be fun, just that mass production method. But I find I just get too bored if they're all the same. So this way I can kind of mix it up a little bit, but still follow the same steps, you know, so I get similar cards, but they each have their own little, you know, thing. So after I had assembled all of my gnomes, I had die cut some Schoolhouse Red cardstock. Some came in the kit. I added more since I'm doing more cards. Um, I die cut it with one of Simon's basic rectangle dies. And then I'm also gonna cut down some black cardstock. I thought this would be easier to cut down the cardstock, at least with this sentiment, cut it down first, then stamp it. So I'm gonna cut down this black cardstock into strips because I want to heat emboss that large Christmas word. And this is from the Gnome for the Holidays stamp set. Comes in the kit, again, also available separately. So once I figured out what size I needed for these sentiments, then it's just a matter of quickly like trimming them into pieces so that I have six of them. Because again, when I'm doing, regardless of whether it be, you know, ones with a little bit of a unique twist or just something I'm doing multiples of, I do everything at once rather than making one card from start to finish and then going to the second card, that would take 10 times longer. So I do all my steps at once. So I did, you know, all the die cutting of the gnomes at once, all the coloring at once, assembling at once. And then with the sentiments, I'm going to stamp and heat emboss all these sentiments at the same time. And to speed up this process, of course, I pulled out my mini Misty and I just applied my anti-static powder tool to the cardstock. And then I'm going to stamp these sentiments with clear embossing ink. And then I'm going to coat them with detail white embossing powder. And since I've trimmed these sentiments down and there's not gonna be a lot of wiggle room around them, 
I'm going to use my tweezers to hold these sentiment strips while I apply the embossing powder and then I'm also going to use them when it comes time to melt them. But it works faster if I stamp everything first and coat it with the embossing powder and then I just set it aside carefully, making sure that I'm not, um, you know, hitting them with my elbow when they're just sitting with the powder on them because I do things like that. So I just set each one aside so I can stamp each one, coat each one with embossing powder and then I will uh, melt them all like one after then another so that my heat tool just stays hot. And again, this just goes quick and easy. So I just pick it up with my reverse tweezers, melt it with my heat tool, set it down, pick up the next one and just keep repeating this process. So I could technically do quite a few more of these in a sitting again, technically, but my, my craft space, like my office is small. So this takes up doing this many takes up about the max because <laughs> I've got like scraps paper on the floor you know my desk is completely covered embossing powders everywhere all that fun stuff it's but at the same time it's just an enjoyable process so while I was heat embossing these sentiments I was thinking about how I was going to finish off the sentiments because there's more sentiments in the set I didn't want it just to say Christmas I wanted it to actually say wishing you a very happy Christmas because that's what's in the set so to do that, I actually pulled out just some scraps of Simon's Smoke cardstock. Just a nice shade of gray that goes with um, this kit. So I pulled those scraps out and with this one, it was easier to just have these two pieces. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment in the exact same way, like anti-static powder tool, clear ink. But with this, I'm just gonna shift the cardstock down two times so I can stamp the sentiment three times on each of these scraps of cardstock just spacing them far enough apart because these ones I'm going to die cut. I don't have to worry about like trimming anything out with my paper trimmer. It's just faster to stamp it like this and then I'll coat it with the white embossing powder, melt it with my heat tool, and then I can die cut these with one of Simon's uh, sentiment label wafer dies. And that way they'll be, you know, perfectly straight and whatnot. So melt all these with my heat tool on both pieces of cardstock and then I will run these through my die cut machine and die cut all the sentiments. And once they're all die cut, I'm just gonna use my paper trimmer to trim off the ends. You could use scissors. I've mentioned this before though. I find that I cut on an angle. I can't cut a straight line with my scissors, very rarely. Every once in a while I seem to get it right, but when I'm doing multiples like this, it's just easier to use a paper trimmer so I don't have to think about it too much or overthink about it. That's usually problems overthinking. So I just use my little Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer here and just trim off the ends so that each of these sentiments is just has nice, nice clean edges. And then while I've got my paper trimmer out, I'm also gonna start trimming down several of the pattern papers all the same ones I use for the gnomes plus a few others that came in the kit I'm just trimming strips off basically so that would be a nice way to kind of back all of these gnomes and also bring more of the patterns in to all of these cards plus it still leaves me with um full like full size in the sense like a2 size of those pattern papers so I can still make a bunch more cards later on with them so once I kind of figured out my rough idea of a layout this is where I start kind of fiddling and I don't often show this in videos just because sometimes it can take a while while I'm figuring out a layout, figuring out what I'm doing, etc. But that's basically what I was doing here is just kind of trimming down pieces and like mentally planning where I was going to put things and then actually laying it out on my little card front here. And then this is where I was like, hmm, it needs something more. So what I did was I pulled some of the snowflakes from that gnome for the holiday stamp set and more pieces of that smoke cardstock. And I'm going to stamp these snowflakes onto these pieces with that same clear embossing ink. And then again, I'm going to white heat emboss these with that detail white embossing powder. So same process. I'm just going to keep stamping, coating with embossing powder until I have all the pieces stamped and covered with the embossing powder. And then I can melt all of them in one step, quick and easy and get her done. So I just kept going along and inking up those snowflakes with Simon's clear embossing ink coating it with a detail white embossing powder using the anti-static powder tool throughout because that uh, with this sort of process when you're doing like multiples too it's always good to have that anti-static powder because I tend to get just like fingerprints and that any the oils from your fingers is why you use the anti-static powder tool it's to kind of prevent the embossing powder from sticking to anything but what you specifically stamped so after everything was stamped coated with embossing powder melted it all with my heat tool 
And then this is where I pulled out the wafer dies that I had bought to go with this stamp set. Um, Simon had released them at the same time as the kit. So I ordered them because for me, convenience and for something like this, this is exactly why. So I can just tape the dies into place with my washi tape and then I'll run these through. And again, I'll do this process. I'm no, I was just tuning out listening to you. I'm listening to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. That's the book I'm on right now. I've mentioned this before. I've read Harry Potter like dozens of times, <laughs> but I've been getting them all on Audible, like one by one and like listening to them the last few weeks and just enjoying the process. So that's what I was doing. I was like listening to the book and like die cutting, you know, just kind of mindless work while I can sit and enjoy the book. So got all my die cutting done. So now is the time to just assemble. I did one card front off camera. I was happy with how everything was laid out. So it's like, okay, now is to go through and do it all. So that's what I did. I figured out which patterns I wanted to go with which gnome and then all the same sentiments, obviously, and all the same snowflakes, all the same backgrounds at Schoolhouse Red cardstock. So then all I had to do now is just adhere everything into place. So really quick and easy process. And for these, I just found it was easier to adhere the entire like assembled card front, like assemble everything and adhere it all at once rather than just do those big wide pa pattern paper strips and do that like over and over and over again. I found it was just easier to just finish each card front and then move on to the next one since I'm not doing anything um, different like um, foam tape, etc. If I was doing that, I would adhere everything with the craft tacky glue first and then the elements with foam tape, I would apply all the foam tape and then adhere that, etc. But with these, I decided not to use any foam tape to kind of adhere them all flat. It'll be a bit of dimension with the crystals I add in a, in a minute or two, but I kept these fairly flat. It makes it easier to mail them. So once I had everything adhered, I've got to do my card bases. So I've got all my card bases here. They're already scored. They're all top folding A2 card sizes, and they are all Simon's 120 pound white cardstock. So I pulled out another sentiment from the Gnome for the Holidays set, and I'm just inking this up with Simon's just black dye ink. And since I have it lined up in my Mini Misty, again, quick and easy, I can just pop in each card base, stamp, pop in the next card base, stamp. So I get all the sentiments stamped on all six card bases in literally the span of like a minute. So once the sentiments are stamped and that's done, I of course want to add a little bit more. So I'm going to use those same four snowflakes. I'm going to line those up on the first card base here. Once I'm happy with that, got that on the lid of my Misty. These I'm inking up with Simon's Smoke ink to go with the cardstock I used on the front. And same thing, ink up the stamp, stamp on the card base, pop in the next card base and just keep repeating that process until all the card bases are stamped. So again, takes Took a little extra, you know, a few seconds because there's more stamps to ink up than just a sentiment, but also took no time at all. So once those are stamped, all the insides of my cards are complete. So now all I have to do is assemble the card fronts to the card bases. And all that requires is me putting some craft tacky glue on the back of the card fronts, pressing them to the card base. And then again, repeating that process until all six cards are complete. You could leave it here and it looks fine. You guys just know me. I like to have that little bit of like bling, a little bit of embellishment. And because I have tons, tons of embellishments here, I need to use them. So I pulled out some Studio Cadia crystals in Onyx. I have gray clouds and the snow crystal. So gray, black, and white, literally. They just went with all the colors. It was too perfect not to. So I spread these, like poured them into just my little Studio Cadia trays and then assembled them, like kind of figured out where I wanted them to go on the card. And again, just kind of repeated the process after I finished the first card and zoned out to my Audible book. Not sponsored, just FYI. If it was, I would have a link or something, you know, I don't even know how that all works. But anyway, whatever, back to the cards. <laughs> All I did was adhere the crystals into place with dabs of craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my jewel picker, pressing them into the glue, and then that finished off the process. So that was six really fun cards with this gnome die and the stamp set and whatnot. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to everything. If you wanna check that out, it's in the description box directly below the video, as well as on my blog, which is also linked directly below. 
So you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.